Hello, everybody. So I just want to go over some updates from today that have happened. We have the update that first comes from the police department that they put out a little bit ago here that says that the police is providing the following information to update the public on the known facts surrounding the four murders that occurred November 13th. Update info. Digital media tips. Uh, FBI continues to assist the PD and uh, state police on the homicide and FBI is accepting tips and digital media at fbi.gov slash Moscow, Idaho. And then anyone with information can also call the tip line at 82 or 208-883-7180. <clears throat> but it says that on the night of the incident, Officers located a dog at the residence. The dog was unharmed and turned over to animal services and then released to a responsible party. So I will assume that's kind of interesting. It says on the night of the incident, right? The officers located a dog. So then maybe it was true that a dog got let out, right? Because that's something that we had heard was that supposedly the dog had been let out <clears throat> and had been turned over, right? Was that an animal, uh, some type of animal shelter of some sort? And so it kind of sounds like that because it says the night of the incident doesn't say the day that the police went there and found them. the night of the incident. So that's kind of interesting, but um, nonetheless, I'm glad that the dog is okay and that it's accounted for. And uh, the responsible party is possibly the um, boyfriend or ex-boyfriend, right? That uh, she shared the dog with. So that's good. Um, another one is that they want rumor control. Detectives are aware that the sheriff's office incident of a report of a skinned dog and have determined it is unrelated to this incident incident and that um you're to contact that county sheriff's office for further details interesting <clears throat> um i'm not sure if you heard about it right but the, the little dog i believe his name was buddy and mm, is a rather awful situation and it happened prior to this and people were wondering if that could have any connection at all also there's um another other animals that had uh shown up that was also kind of skinned or or um, had some disgusting stuff done to them too could that have been related right a lot of questions have been getting asked i see that somebody's paying attention to what's going around on the internet because they are addressing it and so that's uh, that's good because then it says detectives are also aware of the um, police incident of a report of a deceased of deceased animals left on a resident's property. This was determined to be wildlife activity and unrelated to the incident. And then it says that there will be the press conference that is on Wednesday, and then it goes into the regular information. So that is what they put out um, tonight is basically just a reminder of where you could send tips and about um, the pet dog having got out, right? And then also about the skin dog and the other animal. So yes, that's pretty good information for them to have at least cleared that part up because again, that was starting to circulate more and more. I had noticed that myself as well. I will bring you over to a quick uh, video here. And we're just going to go through some of the stuff today. So this was an update that was given. Hey, good morning, Ted. This is the home where four University of Idaho students were found brutally murdered just steps from campus. 
It is still a very active scene. Police responded here November 13th after receiving a 911 call finding the front door of this home open and no sign of forced entry. Two other people were found alive and unhurt in the home. Police released a statement saying they no longer believe the surviving roommates are involved in the crime, but the call was made from someone using a roommate's phone. Was there someone else at the home other than those two roommates? There was other friends that had arrived um, at the location. Autopsies performed on the four University of Idaho students showed that all four were stabbed to death while they were likely asleep. But there were no signs of sexual assault. Officers have not identified a suspect or suspects or found the weapon that was used to stab the students. But detectives have seized contents from the three dumpsters located near the residence with no items seeming to be linked to the crime. The Idaho Statesman reported last week that police are searching for a military style knife in connection with these killings. Police have said evidence found here at the scene leads them to believe that the students were targeted as nothing appears to have been stolen from the victims or the home. The city of Moscow Police Department also shared an updated map and timeline as authorities seek information from the public by drawing attention to the victims' movements around town the night of November 12th and the early morning hours of November 13th. What do you want to tell okay. the community members who maybe are a little scared right now um, that the killer or killer is on the loose? I wish we had more answers and they're still asking questions. And here in Moscow, Ted, the University of Idaho maintains elevated security levels as tips continue to pour in and be processed as leads in the still unsolved murders. Okay, and then I'm gonna bring you over here. This is um, from Ethan's parents earlier. He had his um, well, he had a funeral today, and so this is his family here. So my name is Stacy Chapin. <laughs> I thought I could do this. <laughs> today we're here to honor the life and legacy of our son and brother, Ethan Chapin, one of the most incredible people <laughs> you'll ever know. Together, we want to extend gratitude to the following. Our neighbors in Mount Vernon and LaConnor, Washington, and the local communities of Priest Lake and Moscow, Idaho, for their ongoing support and care. Our extended family and friends who serve as beacons of strength and remain by our, by our side throughout every moment. The Moscow Police Department, who now carry the burden every day, not only for us, but for all of the impacted families. And the many strangers across the country, your outreach and kind words are profoundly touching. Please know we now consider all of you friends. And lastly, we thank the media for keeping this story top of mind. Thank you. That's so sad. Oh, that's so sad. Um, <clears throat> there's a write-up about it, and it basically um, says just over a week after their son was murdered, near the University of Idaho, friends and family gather to remember Ethan. Um, he turned 20 in late October, was one of the four students killed in an off-campus home. He had been staying with his girlfriend, who was among the victims. Um, she was joined by her husband and children outside um, just before they went inside for his memorial service. Ethan was a triplet who grew up in Conway, Washington. During COVID, his family packed up and moved to their place in Priest Lake, Idaho, Idaho where Ethan worked at Hills Resort. They returned home for their senior year and graduated from Mount Vernon High School. All three triplets attended the University of Idaho. <clears throat> um, before the service Monday, the family also extended their gratitude to the communities, families, and friends that have supported them. 
and then it, it's what we heard, right? Um, yeah, and that's, and then you heard what she said. And then also, I'm gonna bring you over here really quickly to his obituary. And uh, we'll look at that really quick, right? So um, it shows the funeral home. And it says Ethan a Triplet was born first at 4.43 p.m. on a beautiful Tuesday evening in October. He was born at Swedish Hospital in Seattle. Maisie arrived shortly after at 4.44 and Hunter at 4.45. Our family spent the first year and a half living in Olympia at Summit Lake, and then we moved to Conway. The kids attended Conway School, where they got a great education and also played soccer basketball and ran cross country. One of Ethan's greatest memories was on the basketball court with his brother at Conway wearing jersey number 30. Ethan is survived by his dad, um, mom, surviving triplets. And it goes on to explain others, right? Um, he attended uh, Mount Vernon High School. His school was cut short by COVID. So Ethan and his siblings packed up, headed to Idaho where they went to work at Hills Resort, they went back to Mount Vernon to start the senior year at MVHS, but school was still not in session. They worked at Tulip Town through the Tulip season and then headed back to Idaho to continue working at Hills Resort during the summer, just prior to attending the University of Idaho. In August of 2021, our family made the journey to University of Idaho to drop off all three of the kiddos. At college, the boys, both Ethan and Hunter joined the fraternity of Sigma chat. I don't know, I say that wrong every time. <clears throat> and then it says where uh, Macy joined um, Macy. And then since attending the University of Idaho, Ethan lived his best life. He loved the social life. Oh. Um. He continued to play sports. We were all very fortunate to play golf with him all this su last summer. Um, if he was on the golf course or working, you could usually find him surfing, playing sand volleyball or pickleball. He loved life. He laughed continuously, smiled when he, he woke up and was still smiling when he went to bed. He was kind to all and a friend to all. May we all try to make the earth a better place. And may we all live like ethan oh my and then the memorial service was um today and so yeah i think today was more the memorial not the i, I don't know but yeah that's wow oh, i just can't i feel so sad for these families it's so sad um and then i'm going to show you over here let me grab um, this is actually what uh, if you remember I believe that two of the girls had worked at Texas Roadhouse right uh, for a period of time I think it was two of them um, I don't quote me on that right I'm bringing you over though to might have just been the one but <clears throat> it holds a fundraiser um, at Coeur the Coeur d'Alene one. We begin tonight with our continuing coverage of the murder of four University of Idaho students happening right now. The Coeur d'Alene Texas Roadhouse, which is where one of the victims, Zana Kernodal, used to work, is holding a fundraiser in honor of those victims. Our Kyle Simchuk is there right now. And Kyle, what has the reaction been from the community out there? Well, Mark, the reaction has been incredible. You know, we got here around three o'clock. There was a line out the door, a lot of people asking about this fundraiser, and some people just had no idea it was even happy or happening tonight, but they were just really happy to support these families in any way that they can. And we do know that Zaina Kernodal, one of the students killed, she worked at this Texas Roadhouse before leaving for the University of Idaho. The restaurant said in a Facebook post, she will be dearly missed. Our deepest condolences go out to the families and friends of these four students. Now, the fundraiser will also help the other three families of Ethan Chapin, Madison Mogan, and Kaylee Gonzalez. So here's the details for tonight's event from 3 o'clock to 9 p.m., the restaurant will donate 10% of sales. And if you donate $5, you get peanuts and a free appetizer. There's also a raffle. And we're told that all the proceeds from that raffle will go to the families. We saw one man walk out with a handful of them. Here's what he told us. 
have two granddaughters are going to be going to college in a couple of years, and I, this at home, it's a shame. I, you know, anything devastating like that is uh, is horrible, and whatever it takes to help the families, and so instead of just donating a few dollars, you know, it's, families need it more than I do. Personally, I'm from Sandpoint, and I know people that know them, and I hope things can get resolved and our uh, blessings go out to the families. And Texas Roadhouse also put out four posters, which each of the victims' names on them, people can write a message. Those will be sent to the family, we're told. And as for that man with all those raffle tickets, he said, hey, I don't even know what the prizes are. He just put in $50, got a bunch of tickets. Again, he just wants to help these families in any way they can, and so do so many other people here in North Idaho. Reporting live in Coeur d'Alene, Kyle Simchuk, Crim2 News. All right, Kyle, thank you very much. I love seeing that. Oh, that's so great. I love that he just bought a whole bunch, right? Just dropped like, hey, here's $50. That is so good. Oh, I love to still see the good that we have, right? We see so much negativity and these things are so heavy and awful, but um, yeah, it's good to see some positive. Okay, and then I'm going to show you this that was reported on earlier. I don't really uh, agree with why he thinks. So this man thinks that it's so that they could look for a weapon. I personally am going to tell you straight up, I don't think it's to look for a weapon at all. Um, but it ends up being changed anyway. So um, it, it they move it back, right? So the crime scene, it gets pushed out right now in this video. And it's already been moved back into where it originally was. So I don't know what was up, right? Former homicide detective and Fox News contributor Ted Williams is live on the ground outside the house in Moscow, Idaho. Ted, I've been watching your reporting out there today, and you're really giving us some insight into the lay of the land here and which areas are, are blocked off and what kind of work they're doing there right now. What can you tell us, Ted? Well, I can tell you that in the last few minutes, Martha, there's been some developments here uh, where law enforcement is here on the crime scene and they are blocking off the crime scene. They are, what they're doing at the crime scene here is that they are broadening the crime scene. Uh, there's crime scenes tape up around the home. And what we are now finding is that part of the parking lot itself is being uh, broadened off as part of the crime scene. Now, earlier I had spoken about the area uh, of the crime scene that the leaves and everything back here were rather undisturbed. And I spoke about the fact that the killer or killers very well could have come out of what we have as a rear door back here. We don't really know that they did, but if they did, and if they wanted to get rid of their wep the weapon, the, the knife that was used to kill these four uh, young people, they could have dumped that knife anywhere back here. So I would have to believe at some stage or another, law enforcement is gonna perform a grid search of this area just to clear it I'm not saying that the murder weapon is back here, but primarily to make a determination if there is any physical evidence back here. Mm -hmm. Martha, this was a very gruesome murder scene, according to the medical examiner. According to the medical examiner, there was actually blood on the walls. And I can tell you, if we pan over, we're looking at the second and third story of this home. And as you look, these are the two uh, sections where the bodies were supposed to have been found on the second and third floor. Now, it is believed that there were two surviving individuals here that was on the second fl floor. Not, I stand to be corrected on the first floor of this home. Uh, those individuals, nine hours later, a call was put into law enforcement. 
Now, it is my understanding that before law enforcement arrived, that those individuals may have called others that came to the scene, meaning the other civilians. The problem with that is there's always a concern of contamination of this scene. So all of these things are going on right now. But as we speak, law enforcement is here cordoning off this area, mm -hmm. widening the area. Yeah. Um, Ted, you know, there's there are just so, so many questions here. Do the police... And I'm going to talk to one of the uh, one of the nearby police um, captains in just a moment. But do they still do they have any have they let anything any knowledge of, come out about whether or not they believe this is someone who knew these victims or whether or not they think this is some sort of outside serial killer crazed person? Is there any indication of which way this is look, leading right now? No, uh, the one nugget that they gave us early on is that. Law enforcement believes that this was a targeted killing of these young mm -hmm. uh, four students. And so as a result of that, uh, one of the things that we tried to establish and we don't know and we've tried to get it from law enforcement is do they actually know who was actually targeted here, Mar uh, Martha? And second of all, uh, what was the focus and the motive for targeting that mm -hmm. one person? We don't know if it was any of the individuals that were killed here or the two surviving individuals. Uh, Ted, thank you very much. Uh yeah, so, I mean, I, I agree to if you've got people coming into the home, right, multiple other of the friends coming in, that could definitely make them contaminate that could be a problem. That could really be a huge problem. Oh, that could be not good. This can make things real difficult. But um, as for searching for, like, looking for the weapon, I don't exactly think that's what was going on. Not really what I think was happening. Um, I think maybe more an ex, you know, an exit go going in and out from a certain area in the back into the home is what I think they could have been looking for. But uh Noah went there. He said that multiple people here tell me that within the past hour, investigators moved the tape behind the home to expand the crime scene. They say investigators took some measurements, then moved the tape back. When I got here, the tape was back to its original spot. So, yeah, whatever they were doing, like they did it. They, they did it and then moved the, the, the tape back over. So... It's not like they expanded the crime scene, like, you know, permanently or anything. So kind of interesting, but that's what's been going on, right? So they did a little bit with the crime scene that we were able to actually see. Uh, there was the Texas Roadhouse fundraiser that they did. The Ethan's family did the um, memorial. And uh, then the, the update from the police about you know the dog that got skinned not being anything to do with this they don't believe or the wildlife that was dead same thing so yeah those are the updates for today but i will keep you guys posted as we hear more and uh tomorrow's news starts to come out but i hope you guys have a good one i will talk to you very soon